Hello there guys, Manchester City are through to the semi-finals of the Cara Boa Cup. Despite the best efforts of Bobby Madeley, the referee who had an absolute shocking game for the second time this season for Manchester City, he was absolutely diabolical. This needs to be addressed at the start of this video. The man is an absolute charlatan, a disgrace to the game. He was genuinely woeful all night. You never knew which way a decision was going to go and he felt like he was guessing throughout most of the game. Eight minutes injury time, no idea where that came from and then obviously being conned or being overly sensitive and giving a dive for a penalty in the what 96 minute he was absolutely atrocious just niggly uh, indecisive uh, basically totally unpredictable as well obviously he said Walker off against Everton early in the season he's just genuinely an atrocious referee that was a shocking decision that day against Everton and another shocking decision today uh, and after all that after all said and done after made this absolutely horror show we still showed enough desire with a team uh, full of kids full of raw players full of squad players who don't play very often to get through uh, against a Leicester team that seemed to grow into the game as it developed we started off pretty well I thought in general we controlled the early spells of the game we looked relatively confident and then I guess our naivety started to show a little bit we did score and not against the run of play we were still kind of level at that kind of point in terms of the overall flow of the game but Gundogan uh, led a charge slipped past one or two defenders and played in Bernardo Silva who scored and then after that we kind of lost a little bit of impetus uh, we lost control of the midfield the defence looked a little bit shaky in general and obviously Leicester uh, the crowd were buoyed when they brought on their big two Riyad Mahrez and Jamie Vardy and they eventually got back in it and through terrible means in general it was never, never a penalty in a million years but they got back in it and I'll be honest from that point onwards when it went to extra time I thought given the young players on the pitch given the debutants there that maybe we were going to end up losing this but credit to them they battled hard they stuck in they did a job they worked really hard and then when it came to the penalty show, that man Claudio Bravo pulled out some more uh, magic as he seems to do in penalties. He loves a penalty shoe out for Chile. He did it against Wolves in the previous round, Claudio. What a beautiful man you are. And big shout out as well to Lucas Demay to step up to take that third penalty in the face of a, a lot of nerve-wracking tension there. This game for me, though, was about the young players. It was a fantastic night for the CFA. A night where five players who've been at City's Academy since were very young boys, the likes of uh, Brahim, Foden, Adrobayo, and Namaj and Deli Bashir, who all played a significant part in the game. They all played 40 minutes plus, and it's fantastic for them. That'll teach them more than 20 games in the EDS will do. That one spell, that substitute appearance for Namaj and Deli Bashir, their full debuts in the quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup against a team that was champions only a couple of years back that's huge for them and they did their part they pulled through and helped the team go through that'll teach them more that 40 minutes than uh, any EDS game will ever do more than 20 EDS games they'll they'll grow from that the CFA will be buzzing you can't begin to point to words how much that'll ripple around the CFA how they'll see that these players can get a chance and they'll get uh, they'll get a game if they earn it through uh, in cups like this that Pep is paying attention to them I never thought he was going to bring on Deli Bashir in the major given the fact they had Sane there and Delph and Walker on the bench but he didn't he brought on the young lads I know the idea was to try and get lucky and maybe get through to uh, the full time whistle given the fact we won a lot but he still couldn't have, he still could have not brought them on if he didn't want to but he did and it was great for him it was a vote of confidence for him and no I'm not going to pretend any of them played world class I thought in general they did exactly what they had to do they will develop they will get more comfortable they will start to feel themselves that they belong uh, and as they do that they'll start to improve their performances and they'll start to get stronger mentally quicker it's a huge step up from the EDS to playing against a team like Leicester and by and large they did themselves proud. I felt like a proud father watching that game for them. It's a fantastic day for the CFA. Individually I thought Adrobayo was the standout. That was his best game in my personal opinion in a City shirt. Bear in mind he was against Mangala and Mangala's been good recently but his nerves and jitters started to reappear in a defence that was a little bit more makeshift shall we say. But Adrobayo I thought he was good. A couple of straight passes but he was largely composed. He was strong uh, he was tall. <laughs> he was tall obviously he was tall. He was decent on the ball in general and when Lombardi came off he kind of reined him in pretty well in general he played like the more mature one of the two and it's no surprise given the fact he's more used to this style of football given the fact that he's come from our academy I thought that was a good game for him I think it was notable that his confidence and his self-belief was much better given the fact that he'd only played a game quite recently against Shakhtar as opposed to having to wait three months each time he needs games now he proved that he's obviously going to be good enough for a decent level at some point in his career hopefully he can get even better and imagine how good he would be potentially in theory alongside a senior player like Stones or Otamendi we can only 
only uh, hope that maybe he gets more chances one day, but he should be very, very happy with his performance tonight. Phil Foden, I'm a big Phil Foden fan. He looked like a 17-year-old. I'm not going to pretend he was fantastic. A couple of nice moments, a whip cross, a nice little one-two here and there. But in general, I think he needs to learn that in the centre of the pitch in a game like that, you have a lot less time and the players are a lot stronger. And that will just come with experience. You can't experience it until you've actually experienced it. And I think in general, he's caught on the ball a couple of times. He looks a little bit uh, unexpected of the challenge, maybe a little bit weaker than some of the players were. But that's going to be expected. He's a young boy still. A fantastically gifted young boy. But that was his uh, fourth ever appearance. But he's made four appearances now as a 17-year-old. His first starting in his preferred position. It's a fantastic night for him. A young Stockport lad played for Manchester City at 17 years old. How good does that feel? Brahim, alongside him, started really well. Looks really bright, really strong. But he did start to fade in the second half, which I guess is probably going to happen when uh, Leicester start coming back into it. He's usually the one. The young winger is usually the one that's the first to be hooked when things start to go against the team and it's no surprise that it came off of me I've, I've got to give a shout out to Tom Deli Bashiru I was not expecting him to be involved tonight but when he came on he probably only thought he was going to get 8 minutes the 8 minutes injury time but he ended up having uh, 40 given the extra time and he, he was good I thought obviously he, he could see you could physically see the nerves on him but he was uh, composed he was tidy he was strong and he, he looked relatively confident uh, given the fact that he probably wasn't expecting to be involved tonight either a week ago he did himself absolutely uh, a world of good there I'm genuinely buzzing for him a, a wonderful little young player another is probably going to have a great career for himself hopefully in Manchester City but tonight will be something he'll remember for a very long time as it will be for Lucas Demetri he was positioned out on the right he's not a right winger at all he's a striker but he's still putting a decent little shift a couple of sloppy touches but a couple of moments too where he drove at their defence in general I can't discount how good this is for the team tonight Bernardo Silva I thought it was frustrating in terms of his decision making he showed more aggression and desire and he showed his dribbling ability a little bit more than we've seen recently so that is coming back into his game still but there was some decision making that let him down but we have seen what Gundogan has learned from a run of games recently so maybe that's all he needs to Gundogan in my opinion was the best player on the pitch by the way I thought he was absolutely excellent uh, in general he looked to cut above the most he did fade a little bit in the second half but then again he probably got a little bit tired as well but he was a, a quality quality act in that first half Yaya just looked like Yaya does now he looked very old and Walker when he came on never been should have been a penalty but he looked like a senior uh, figure in that defence as well. Bravo, a bit iffy, but he saved the penalties. A couple of decent little saves. Danilo, up and down, but maybe he needs a run of games too. Jesus had a night to forget for me. Some nice little flicks, but then he kind of ran into blind alleys or gave the ball away far too softly. He needs to improve that consistency, and hopefully that will come with time. But in general, we're through again. Another uh, one, another drawn win, but we're through to the semi-finals now, so that's a huge night for these young lads. It's a huge night for the academy, and you could see in the face of Guardiola how much he meant it in the face of adversity, in the face of sort of terrible refereeing to get through uh, on a night like this they enjoyed that victory you could tell you saw him Guardiola going up to the fans leading the Guardiola chant which is amazing for the away fans and the team spirit was absolutely rocking after that it's another uh, victorious night for Manchester City if not a direct victory it kind of is and it kind of isn't at the same time it's a victorious night at least we're through to the semi-finals life is very good let me know who you thought was a standout player let me know what you thought of the young lads I thought they did themselves proud in difficult circumstances uh, go and watch the two transfer target videos that I've done about Zaha, Van Dyke, uh, Frankie de Jong and so on. If you haven't already, subscribe and I will see you soon. I just got to add this bit at the end on my phone because my camera's gone flat. How could I forget about Zinchenko? He was absolutely excellent tonight. I'm sorry, Zinchenko. I thought he was brilliant. Given the fact that a lot of people questioned his defensive capabilities against Wolves, uh, which is probably fair enough. He looked very comfortable against Wolves technically, but defensively, he left a little bit to design. He was obviously exhausted as well, given the fact it was his first start in ages. Tonight, he was different. He played the whole 120 minutes. He looked confident. He looked composed. He looked strong. He put in a few very solid challenges in against Mahrez when he came on, and he was largely untroubled. He's obviously Obviously a very good football, he has a hell of a left foot, that, that much is very clear, he can strike a ball, he can pass and he can move, fair play to him, his attitude is excellent and knuckle down, he's obviously uh, quite well liked by Pep, Pep went up to him afterwards and had his arms around him and he obviously had some words to pray for him, Zinchenko thought was very good, anyway guys this is the actual ending of the video now so uh, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you soon.